Top 15 Recent Confessions You Won't Believe of Current WWE Divas If you are brand new to our channel, we invite you to take a moment to subscribe. Just click on the lit red button as well as the gray bell. Why the bell? Well, it will let you know every time we post a new video. 15. Fifteen. Page. I contemplated. In one of the most shocking confessions in recent memory, Page broke down on the Lillian Garcia podcast, explaining the details of her state following the leaked photos and videos that exposed her personal life. Although Page was on the down low, she was struggling badly behind the scenes, even admitting that thoughts of suicide crept up into her head. The hardest part for Page at the time, was dealing with the fact, that she would be remembered as the tape star instead of her prowess in the ring. Along with disturbing thoughts, Paige also turned to alcohol as an escape. As if that wasn't bad enough, she even fainted on various occasions due to exhaustion. At the time of her depression, Paige had basically stopped eating, which led to a stress-induced state of anorexia. The photo above clearly shows just how bad things got for Paige as she appeared extremely unhealthy. Thankfully, she's recovered since looking like her old self again. 14. Fourteen. Naomi, I was told to be less athletic in the ring. It's hard to believe, but just five years ago, Naomi was told by WWE officials to be less athletic inside of the ring, which is truly shocking given the state of the division nowadays, which is all about athleticism and less about one's look. This wasn't always the case however, as just a couple of years ago Naomi was told to scale back her in-ring work, and asked to perform less high-risk maneuvers, while putting more of a focus on a catch-fighting style of method. The WWE wanted women, to be distinct from the men, and not wrestling like them. Obviously, once the revolution took place, Naomi was one of the happiest of the bunch. Some were shocked to see her athleticism, though little do many understand, that it was always there, the only difference is she was told to tone things down before the revolution was underway. 13. 13. Renee Young, I was hit on by Dave Foley. Before we dive into this story, for those of you that aren't aware, Dave Foley is a legendary Canadian actor. He's been around for quite some time, and what makes the story truly baffling is the age gap between the two, as Foley's in his mid-50s nowadays, while Young is just entering her 30s. Young recalled the situation on the Chris Jericho podcast, when the altercation arose between the two, Young was only 19. Trying to make it as a host and journalist, Young had the huge gig of conducting an interview with Foley, which would later lead to a coffee at Starbucks. Young was excited about the encounter, though she would quickly realize that Foley had other intentions. After a long awkward hug between the two, Young wisely messaged Foley stating that was not her intent for the encounter between the two. 12. 12. Becky Lynch, I was making $50 a night on the indies. For those of you that aspire to be pro wrestlers, take Lynch's shocking confession as a useful reminder, starting off in the wrestling business, you're likely making peanuts. Like many others, Lynch was working several dates around the world making $50 a night. She began touring Europe in 2005, and would also work dates in Japan. She recalled her time in Japan as noteworthy back then, making $100 a night which was a massive upgrade for her back in the day. Lynch would end up leaving the wrestling business for a more stable career as a flight attendant, though thankfully, her new career wouldn't last long, and she'd make the wise choice to return to wrestling. In 2013, she caught the break of a lifetime earning a deal with the WWE's developmental system, NXT. 11. 11. Carmella, 
I had applied to be on Tough Enough. Despite the fact that Carmella had wrestling in her bloodline with her father working for the WWE as an enhancement talent, she had no plans of walking in her dad's footsteps. Instead, she used her athletic prowess for a career in cheerleading. With an agent by her side, she had actually applied for Tough Enough, though the plans eventually fell through due to her involvement as a Laker girl. Some things are just meant to be, and Carmella would be presented with another shot at the company a little later. At first, she was told by her agent that a potential boxing-type deal was in the works, though later, it was established that it was in fact the WWE. With her father having worked in the business she was ecstatic. After numerous videos and in, she finally got a tryout for FCW. Told to show more personality, which is hard to believe, by Bill Demet, Carmella ended up getting the deal, and reported to NXT. Getting 10. 10. Mickey James, it was going to be my last year on the indies before WWE called. Sometimes in wrestling, timing is everything. Had the WWE waited a little more, perhaps James would have been no longer active in the business. According to Mickey herself, she was planning on leaving the indie scene due to her work with various charities, as our mother and working on an album at the same time. It also didn't help that she was working in front of smaller crowds on the norm. Mickey admitted on the Garcia podcast that the venues compared to the WWE got to her. Then, out of nowhere, James received a call from the head of talent relations Mark Carano. James was ecstatic about the call. The gig was initially meant as a one-match deal, which James was okay with as she always wanted one last match. Due to her performance however, the WWE would pick up her contract, and she's still employed today. What a story. 9. 9. Charlotte, my dad barely gave me any advice early on in my WWE career. In a shocking confession, Charlotte admitted that Father Rick had very little to do with her success early on down in NXT, and as a matter of fact, Rick told her nothing during her earlier days with NXT. Instead, like the rest of the crop down in NXT, Charlotte relied on the likes of coaches Sarah Del Rey and the late Dusty Rhodes to advance her career. Charlotte also admits Natalia was huge in helping her grow, especially when it came to confidence. After winning the NXT Championship, the Nature Boy began to get a little more hands-on with his daughter. Perhaps even Rick himself was surprised at how much she'd progressed in such a short amount of time. Rick is likely prouder than ever nowadays as his daughter's not only the current SmackDown Women's Champion, but she's also a six-time title holder overall, counting her stint with the Divas title. 8. 8. Paige, Al Bordo and I ended things off on good terms. As much as Paige and Del Rio tried to hide it, there was simply no denying that the relationship was toxic for both at various points. Paige admitted to the trials and tribulations of her personal life with Del Rio. Things weren't always the smoothest featuring lots of ups and downs. Social media also didn't help things for the two, Paige admitted. Although both have strong characters, Paige stated that the two ended things off on amicable and positive terms, both wishing the best for each other. The breakup was mainly caused due to the fact that both needed to go their separate ways. Del Rio has a family to take care of while Paige was returning to the grind of the road life with the WWE. With that in mind, it was best that both went their own ways. 7. 7. The Bellas, we pitched a storyline with Melina by our side. Similar to John Cena, the Bellas rarely conduct shoot interviews discussing their opinions on their peers. However, during the Bellas' brief WWE release in 2012 and 2013, they did conduct a shoot interview which consisted of some revealing information. In a shocking twist, the twins actually praised Melina calling her a sister behind the scenes. They even pitched an angle together, the trio wanted to form a faction that consisted of their Latina heritage, though the WWE did not agree ultimately. 
Of course, such info was truly shocking given Melina's past. At the time, Melina wasn't the biggest favorite with some of her peers, like Maria Canilis, referring to her as the H-word. Then again, Maria wasn't the biggest fan of the twins either, so we can see that the Divas locker room was somewhat divided back in the Divas era. 6. 6. Bailey, Hunter is not the one to go to for main roster help. During the Stone Cold podcast, Bailey discussed her run on the main roster, even making the shocking claim that she'd be open to turning heel in the near future. Thinking about such a scenario was preposterous down in NXT given her success, though the same hasn't transpired on the main roster. When asked if she talks to Triple H for some additional help, Bailey made a surprising claim stating that Triple H has little pull when it comes to main roster work. Bailey stated she speaks to the writers or Vince himself when it comes to a certain idea. She even made the claim that she has a good relationship with the boss, although he's still intimidating to talk to from time to time. It remains to be seen what direction is going to be taken with her character in the future. 5. 5. Sasha Banks, Alexa can't tell the difference between Jeff and Matt. We've seen various shots taken between both Sasha and Alexa, in Bliss's defense, she's been much more tame, when it comes to ripping banks. Sasha's been no holds barred however, as the two have ongoing tension since their days in NXT together. According to Banks, Alexa's a phony and only pretends to like wrestling, unlike herself who grew up loving the business. Banks took things to another level during Raw Talk absolutely ripping Bliss, making the claim that she can't even tell the difference between Matt and Jeff Hardy. Given how intensely Sasha delivered the statement, many believe her comments were very real and intended to take another shot at Alexa. In a recent question and answer session, Banks even turned down answering a question in regards to her current relationship with Alexa. It's pretty obvious the two still don't see eye to eye. 4. 4. Alexa Bliss, I applied for a WWE job online. No wonder Sasha is skeptical when it comes to Bliss. After all, she got her job after applying online. With no experience prior, Bliss applied to the company with an athletic background as a former cheerleader and bodybuilder. The experience was enough to get her signed as she joined the company despite no past in ring experience whatsoever. The WWE tinkered with her role early on, she was even paired with Scott Austin as a trail park type character, not to mention a lackluster fairy princess gimmick as well. She would finally find her way as a heel manager, which truly launched her career for the better. Following the heel transition with Blake and Murphy, she would thrive on the main roster, and she's now the current Raw Women's Champion. Remarkable to think that since being drafted in the summer of 2016, she's already a four-time champion. 3. 3. Nia Jax, it sucks getting body shamed in your own backyard. In the last couple of weeks, Jax has been making headlines for a claim she made outside of the ring. According to Nia, not only does she live with body shamming, because of the world of social media, but according to the WWE superstar, she's also dealing with it behind the scenes amongst her peers. Speculation arose when Jax posted a photo via Instagram pointing the finger at her peers who were apparently judgmental while she was getting changed in the locker room. Of course, with the WWE more sensitive than ever before, it shouldn't be too shocking that they've taken the route in turning Jax into a SX symbol giving her a new romance angle with Enzo Amore. In any event, we praise Nia for her courage serving as a role model for many out there struggling with similar issues. 2. 2. Stephanie McMahon, people treated me differently for being Vince's daughter. Again, Stephanie is someone that rarely works shoot interviews, though in a cool twist, she's working on a book which should be quite revealing given the amount of gossip that surrounded her career. She did manage to open up a little bit during an interview with Chris Jericho, 
During the session she discussed the good and the bad pertaining to her life before the WWE. According to Stephanie, she was viewed in a different light by many, for the simple fact that she was McMahon's daughter. Stephanie claimed some instantly looked down on her. In dealing with the circumstances, Steph stated her dad gave her the best advice on dealing with the issue, and that's being able to look at yourself at the end of the day, and know that you're a good person. Stephanie has lived by those words to this day. 1. 1. Paige, I lied about not taking. It was truly a tell-all interview, when Paige sat down with former WWE ring announcer Lillian Garcia. In another shocking confession, Paige admitted that she was lying about her drug usage which was caught by the WWE's wellness exam. Paige took to social media claiming that she failed the exam because of prescription drugs, though the WWE quickly issued a statement claiming Paige's comments were false as an illegal substance was found. Paige admitted to her wrongdoing, claiming she tried to cover it up because of her family. She did in fact take drugs, claiming she used a drug she took when she was 15. Paige admitted she was mixed in with the wrong crowd at the time, but thanks the WWE for sticking by her through thick and thin despite her ongoing difficulties during the hiatus. Yeah.